Hello, I'm Chef Leif Benson, uh, here representing Washington State uh, Potato Commission. Today we're going to be featuring one of the most craveable of all foods, the fresh cut french fry. We're going to be using the Rustard Narcota, one of the best uniform, tastiest potatoes on the market, available all year round on the retail level and the wholesale level. Great potato for fresh cut french fries. And they're always very, very nicely looking and so on. They're just fantastic, shallow eyes, uh, really nice skin and so on. But you do want to wash them. So let's, let's wash them first, get that done, then we move on from there. So once you've washed the, the potatoes, we're going to take them and take them to the cutter. And so we're going to use a 3 8 cutter. The bigger the sizes, the more customized they are. So this is going to be a 3 8 which is probably as small as you'd want to go. So let's go ahead and take a look at that cutter. We're going to keep these unpeeled because we want that kind of rustic sort of look on the peel on there. It's going to add some good character to it and so on. And this is really a simple process. So we're going to be cutting them into some nice cold water. Let's just put them into the cutter here and just place them right in there. You don't have to really do anything, but just give them a nice shove. So it just, just goes right in beautifully. These peels just come out fantastic. Uh, you know, a little skin on there, again, adds that character to it. Uh, beautiful length on this. Uh, this is probably like a 90 count potato, which is about right. Uh, but you, of course, choose what you want for your size, uh, shorter or longer, whatever it might be. But the ricottas have a nice length to them, so you're going to get a good looking, lengthy fry. Now we have our fresh cut potatoes. Now, one thing you want to do is that uh, you know, potatoes will, will oxidize a little bit in water. So, what you want to do is add a little bit of white vinegar to it, uh, or you can use citrus acid. In this case, we're going to use just simple white vinegar. And really, your ratio is about you know, about a tablespoon per gallon of water. So you just want to put that in there, and that's going to help keep those potatoes from oxidizing. And then on the potatoes, what you're really doing here is you're leaching out the starches. And when you leach out the starches, we're going to decrease sugar and so on, because sugars, you don't really want a lot of sugar involved in the potatoes, you want to, and, but you want to have the starches leach out. So this water's going to get a little bit cloudy after a while. And I would do this for at least three hours to 24 hours. So you have a lot of flexibility there. But then just serve in your cooler and you're ready to go. Uh, but uh, that's going to keep them really super nice. And it's also going to promote crispness. Let them sit uh, three hours minimum, uh, change the water, uh, and that's going to get a lot of the excess starches off. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to be drying them. So one thing that's important with a fresh cut french fry are the amount of solids. You want as high as solids as possible, and Norcota fits the sweet pot very nicely. One thing you can do if you want to test your own is you can take a, a saline content, which, which is just salt and water. It's just a simple process. It's roughly about a cup to anywhere between eight and 10 cups of water. So just mix those together, and then you can take the Norcota or a rest of potato, and just drop them in. Now these should sink to the bottom, but if they have low salts, they're gonna float. So I want to just put the potato into water here. You see that it's gonna, you know, Kind of suspend right in the middle there. This is because of the saline. If you just drop it into straight water, it would just go right to the bottom. As you see, this is floating nicely in the middle here. So that shows that it has fairly high solids, which is what you want for a fresh cut French fry. You're going to get that kind of nice, you know, nice mouth, mouth texture on it. But that's going to make a really great fry. Anyway, so that's, that's the salinity test for specific gravity in terms of solids are concerned. Very important. The next thing we're gonna do, this you can do on a commercial level, but I had just a salad spinner here. And these of course come in like five gallon size, 10 gallon size for industrial commercial use. So this is just a small version of that. But the point here is that you wanna get off that water because you know, water and oil uh, don't really mix that well. So we're just gonna get in there, get that, uh, get the water off. And just the spinner works great. So, so now that they're fairly dry, pretty nice like that. So these are ready to drop into the fryer. And I would actually pat these dry as well, uh, just to get moisture off. Now, one clue on this thing as far as increasing solids, if you think about it, a potato is roughly about 80% water. So what we're trying to do here is evaporate the water. What's the first thing you see when you drop in a French fry into hot grease? You see steam. Steam is the water. The water needs to come out of the potato to get that crispy French fry. If you were to take these and put them into the cooler, uncovered, overnight or however long. And that uh, dehydration that happens in the walk-in cooler is gonna help uh, that expedite that process. You can also do this uh, once they're blanched from a, f a frozen state, but only once they're blanched. You can't freeze a raw potato because you guys know that already. Anyway, so dehydration is really important here in terms of getting the water out of there. 80%, we wanna reduce it down to about 40% once it's cooked to get that crispy fry as an end product.
Okay, so now that we have our uh, fries uh, pretty much spun dry, we're gonna blanch them here. So we're gonna do, this is called a double fry process. So double frying means that we're gonna blanch them ahead of time. And what we're really doing there is cooking a potato through the middle. So we wanna cook the potato through. We're not trying to crisp them here. We're not trying to give them any color. This is just for cooking the potato. So we're gonna drop them in. And a little bit about the fryer. So 325 degrees. Uh, you know, we can use either peanut oil or canola oil, any type of good inert oil. A lot of fryer oils work just fine on that. Um, uh, in fact, in some cases, when I do want to do a customized fry, I'll actually use pure olive oil. Uh, not extra virgin, because it's too expensive for that, but uh, olive oil is actually kind of, kind of a nice medium too. A little more expensive, but on an upper, upper scale type of thing, uh, olive oil could be a good signature way to do your fries. And anyway, on the French fryer, you don't want to overcrowd the basket or overcrowd the oil because uh, you want to maintain the heat level. The heat level is really important is that if you think about it, these fries are you know, probably about 50 degrees right now. So they're fairly cold. The fryer is at 325 degrees. Once I throw in a lot of French fries or too many French fries, it's going to drop that oil temperature. You don't want to drop the oil temperature too much. So don't overcrowd the basket. So let's just throw some into the basket here. We just drop them in. And you see this is not highly activated because the temperature is fairly low. So all we're gonna do here is give them maybe two, three minutes, not browning them to cook them to be cooked to the middle. Uh, check them. You wanna be having them uh, be able to bend the fry, uh, but not break the fry. So anyway, we're gonna take a look at that. And then about halfway through the baking process or the frying process, uh, we wanna shake them a little bit to kind of get that oil circulating. Again, we're not trying to achieve any color here whatsoever. We're just cooking the potatoes right now. Remember, we talked about 80% water in a potato. This is gonna drop the potato down to almost 40% at this point before we do the finished fry to get them crisp. So again, this is a three, it's cut fry. It might be two or three minutes. If it's a quarter inch fry, it's gonna be less time. If it's, a, if it's a bigger fry, like a half inch, you're gonna give it more time. So you have to experiment a little bit on your time frame. Anyways, but you're going from basically a shiny potato, like these are shiny, to a kind of a matte sort of appearance. A matte appearance is kind of, uh, uh, you can tell the water is coming off those potatoes. So you see they're still nicely white here. Uh, they're looking pretty good. And actually I'm gonna say that's probably about right. So this is two or three minutes and we can just take them out and we'll just go ahead and drain them. Uh, now, so these are gonna cool down. What's gonna happen on the cooling process, you're still evaporating moisture here. So we're still trying to get rid of that 80% water down to about 35, 40% thereabouts. So this is gonna go into, again, I'm prepping this ahead of time. I'm gonna put this in the cooler for service later on. So I'll be doing lots of batches of this on sheet pans, probably on a speed rack into the cooler, let it sit there, ready for service. And then they're gonna be just uh, you know, a couple minutes to crisp them up again. But anyway, so that's gonna look really good. So now you see these are just cooking through. They feel just a little bit on the tender side, which is good. Anyway, so we're just gonna kind of let those go. But again, I'm not gonna cook these right away. These are gonna be stored for later prep, for later use um, uh, when we need it for service. Okay, let's get those uh, fries out of the cooler. Okay, so you've seen now they've gone from a kind of a shiny appearance to a nice matte appearance. So these have cooled down and now they're ready for service. Now at this point, once they're blanched and cooked through, you can actually freeze these. So freezing them is great for backup later on. But anyway, this would be really, really great. Anyway, so another thing that's important is check your fry oil temperature. So I use a thermal gun uh, quite often for that. Uh, your fryer thermometers usually work really well, but just to double check that I'm at the right temperature. So I'm just gonna probe it here. And uh, we're running about 375 degrees, which is about right. Because we're, all we're trying to do here is get that crispy, beautiful, crunchy French fry that just sort of melts in your mouth and is, is fantastic. So let's just take that. We're just gonna drop these fries into the basket here. Like so, and just drop it now. If you have a auto timer or auto lift, that's fantastic. This is where you wanna experiment with time and temperature. Uh, at this point, we're 375. Probably gonna take, take two, three minutes to get these uh, fries crisp up and golden brown. But uh, in your fryer application, it could be any amount of time. It could be less, a little more. So anyway, so time and temperature is always gonna be your call in terms of the potatoes that you're using. The beauty about the Norcota is that they are very consistent year round. So I think you're, you can't go wrong with these. I think they're fantastic. Plus, as you know with the Norcota is that even though we're doing a fresh cut fry program, these are a multi-purpose potato. These can be used for pretty much all your potato needs. Uh, there's still that uh, sort of medium density, you know, nice high solids, uh, certainly for mashed potatoes, all gratin potatoes, uh, 
any type, hash browns, pretty much any, any thing you need, the Norcoda is still going to work beautifully for you. And so you'll see here just in a minute that these are going to brown up really quickly. So just two or three minutes and we have it. You can signaturize them with lots of different herbs and spices for dipping sauces, house-made ketchups, uh, aioli sauces, you know, all kinds of spice blends, even something as beautiful as truffle oil. I do something that's called a fry dressing. I'll take extra virgin olive oil and I'll infuse it with oil, I'll infuse it with herbs and spices like garlic and, so, and any other spices, cumin, whatever it might be. And then as the fries come out of the fryer, I'll actually redress them with extra virgin olive oil that are infused with spices to make a beautiful signature fry. And so let's take a look at these. I'm just gonna show those. Those are just beautiful golden brown right now. So let's just take these out and we're just gonna put them into our bowl. You see, you hear that crunch, that little that crispy sound? You want that crispy sound. Now again, when the hot oil's on there, you wanna season them immediately, get, get the salt on there. Remember in this case, salt is our friend. It's gonna bring out the flavors. You know, your call in for is how much salt to put on there, but a nice liberal coating of salt is a good thing. Now in this case, we can also put on some herbs if we wanted to. Makes a beautiful French fry, a little pepper if you wanted to. Uh, you can use uh, things like uh, cumin. Here's some cumin if you wanted to. Uh, these just make a beautiful French, uh, just, just a good signature item. So now we have these fries here. So uh, look, they're just crisp, nice, just beautiful. Look at that, just, just fantastic. So this is something you want to come back for time and time again. Okay, so now we have our signature fries here. Now let's talk a little bit about holding time. Holding time is very important is that like all food, you know, it has a limited shelf life, so you want to serve them ASAP. You know, I'm thinking maybe five to 10 minutes maximum, but you want hot, crispy French fries here. Uh, so once you have your hot, crispy French fries, signaturize them. You know, I use cumin powder. Uh, you can sort of use chili powder. Even something like coriander and curry powders work really fantastic, along with all the other types of oils that are out there. Even a little bit of uh, malt vinegar is fantastic. There's innumerable condiments out there that would be really exciting that wakes up your palate. But anyway, great products, a lot of versatility, your creativity.